best we can. So to open this meeting, and it's Joe's meeting, but I just wanted to um, say today we're focused on O and M and capital, and you know the reason for this is I think JA's come a long way. We've the the rating agencies have been very pleased with our progress over the last few years. Um, JD Powers recommended us as one of the best operating um, service areas in the Southeast, which a lot of effort went into that. Um, and, you know, going forward, we need to focus in on how do we make sure for the community that we serve how do we provide the best service? How do we provide the best infrastructure in place? And with that, I'm suggesting if some of the amount of capital we're gonna have to spend looking at O&M, looking at a reorg, I'm suggesting and have moved forward with hiring uh, a senior consultant to work with Jay and the team to focus in on these areas. And this person will report to the board. We're still working to finalize this situation. This person has extensive experience in the utility business. And I think it'll be a net benefit to both JEA, the executive team and our community. And this effort um, also hiring a consultant consulting firm, which um, Ted has been working to put a list together is to hire somebody from the outside um, that gives us as much knowledge as possible. And, you know, this, the board is has a fiduciary to make sure we are doing everything possible, have the right information to make the best decisions. And this is what we are working towards. So with that, I'll hand it over to Joe and Joe, it's your meeting. Okay, thanks, Bobby. Um, I wanna comment on the, um, the, the outside consultant, but first let me start by saying this is an information only meeting and so any decisions we need to make, we can't do it here. We'll have to do it at the board meeting. Um, and number two, let me just first see if there's any uh, comments from the public, Landon. Are you seeing anything? I do not see any comments from the public at this time. Okay, great. Um, okay, so so getting back, so let me comment real quick on, on Bobby's thing on the uh, outside consultant. Um, I think that's I think that's absolutely critical. Uh, number one, we I think board members do need an uh, interlocutor to be able to digest a bunch of the products and analysis that'll be coming out of the external consultant we're bringing in to look at all the faucets, and we'll discuss that with the uh, the uh, the RFP or the ITN um, and the scope of work, which is pretty extensive. But I think it's going to be critically important that that person works hand in hand with the, the consultants we eventually bring in and also obviously the JEA staff at all levels um, so that then the, the important digestible material can get to the board members where we can uh, then be able to do our due diligence without getting inundated in a bunch of stuff, sort of like the annual disclosure stuff where, you know, we, we, we get the, all the documents, <clears throat> but with the help of Ted and the other folks, they digest into, into the, the key aspects of it. So I think that'll be very important for that uh, external consultant, uh, whoever that may be to come in on it. Um, okay, next thing I'd like to ask is just put it out there. I think everybody has had the opportunity to take a look at the scope of work uh, for the uh, invitation to, to uh, negotiate. I, I sort of called it an RFP, but um, uh, Bobby, Kwanzaa, or uh, Zachary, um, uh, any comments on it or any concerns or do you think there's anything missing or anything like that? My only comment, Joe, is understanding the timeline of how we process this. And I know okay. 
you know, that, that would be informative to me. Yeah, and so um, let me hold that thought for a sec, Bobby, because I, I do have a proposal for a timeline. Uh, let me, Kwanzaa or Zach, uh, Zachary, anything on your end? Nothing on my end. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, I would just say in the, and again, I, the scope of work from, from my perspective looks great. I would just say in the, um, the paragraph that, uh, where scope of work starts, that second paragraph, uh, where it says to identify areas for cost reduction, I'd say maybe consider instead of cost reduction, identify areas for efficiencies and effectiveness on it. Sort of a minor, minor uh, comment, but I, that, I think that's what we're looking, really looking for is efficiencies and effectiveness. Um, and then for timings good, good, on good this. Good point, John. Okay. For timings on this, um, what I'm proposing is we look at releasing this ITN no later than 26 March. And then we look for awarding the uh, this, the um, award, awarding this RFP no later than 26 April. So we look at giving it a month. And then that said, so before it's awarded, we look for between the uh, the JDA staff and our uh, interlocutor, the, the consultant, to dummy down from the, the list of prospective consultants, which, um, which Jay said, and I'm just looking, it's around 20 or so, I think, roughly. I think what, what I recommend is that it get pulled down to two or three of the best, what you all deem the best consultants, and then that comes before the board for our decision for that. I know it looks like an aggressive timeline, but again, we'd look to be doing that by 26 April so we can get this, this thing moving. Let me stop there and see if anybody has any issues, any issues with those two milestones for releasing the RFP or the ITN on the 26th of March and then being ready to award by the 26th of April. Any showstoppers or any concerns? The only concern I have, Joe, is this is gonna be a long-term engagement. Is that really enough time? And I, I mean, my suggestion in be interested in Kwanzaa and Joe and Dr. Faison's thoughts is should we give a little bit more time to have the board interview the last two? Um, you know, I, I, I'd i rather go ahead and get this started, but I also want to make sure that we've given quality time to interview these last two. Um, and I don't know why we couldn't release the RFQ or whatever you want to call it. Um, but we're going to spend a lot of money on this. And, you know, I just want to make sure we're doing it right. So, right. thoughts from you guys? The timeline does seem to be uh, a bit aggressive. And um, I would like us to have the opportunity to have um, to create a broad enough pool of um, consultants that can 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 do the work for us. And I also would just throw out that it would because I'm new to this and I'll, I'm not certain who has worked with JEA in in the past. But I, I'd like to have discussion around you know being able to bring perhaps um, someone new. And that could give us fresh perspective. And my question is, with such a um, aggressive timeline, is you know, could we could we identify that individual, that firm? Yeah, thanks, Kwanzaa. Good point. Um, let me ask uh, um, Jay and, and his team. What do you think is realistic? So, General Lozavo, um, so I, I just want to make sure that we, we're, we're speaking the same language. Uh, uh, so, um, 
when, when you were talking about April 26 as the award date, but then you were also talking about that as the date that we uh, narrow down to uh, uh, two or three consultants to talk about, I don't think we would so, so there's a little bit of a disconnect for me there. Uh, 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 would, would I think the idea of having uh, around April 26, the uh, presentations of uh, two or three of the narrow down uh, perspective uh, bidders would, would, we could make that work if the board, if y'all wanted us to, uh, but there would still need to be several steps involved after uh, uh, we, we, we narrow down the candidate that you want to move forward with. Uh, uh, and so that would take uh, uh, a few more weeks at least to, to um, you know. So part of the reason that, that we're recommending a, an ITN or an invitation to negotiate gives us some flexibility uh, uh, on the back end after uh, the, um, for lack of a better word, winning consultant, uh, then we can negotiate the price with them. And, and, and so, you know, that, that would need to be uh, taken place. And then, you know, uh, the valuation of those presentations by the board, you, you know, we would have to accumulate that data. Um, and then, uh, you know, so, so my, if my the request was uh, April 26th for, uh, uh, narrowing it down, I think we could make that. It would be tight, uh, but then there would have to be an understanding that it's still a few more steps to have to be involved before we could actually award to the candidate. We wouldn't be able to do that at all in one day. My, my suggestion, Joe, is if we can narrow it down to two or three in April, I'm fine with that. I think Kwanzaa makes a good point is, you know, work with somebody new to you know, JEA would be important. Um, yeah. I'm not talking about five years past, but in recent history. Um, but I think if we can narrow it down and maybe if we could, the board have a presentation with the final two, um, you know, you know, after you guys have narrowed down and after we've hired a consultant, to work with you guys to narrow it down. I think that would be helpful. Um, and, you know, whatever it takes once we've narrowed down to two um, to make sure, but I just want everybody to be aware. I'm not, I don't know what this thing is going to cost. I think when you're thinking about spending $9 billion over 10 years, a billion three every year, you know, getting somebody qualified and good to, you know, work with um, our team and making sure as a fiduciary in today's world, you know, Kwanzaa and Joe and Dr. Faison, I just think it's important for us to make sure that we have a, a, you know, a second opinion of what we're doing, how we're doing. And I do think it would be value added to the executive team. But to me, I think, you know, it's it's uh, it's going to be making some big decisions, and I think looking at you know O and M looking at capital when you're spending that kind of money, um, I think we've got to be as smart as smart it can be. And I've been doing this for, I mean, I've been in the water and sewer business, I've seen the electrical business and I'm still, you know, trying to get up the learning curve. So having somebody inside working with the team, having the right consultant. So my suggestion, Joe, is if we can, um, by April, narrow it down to two or three, and then once we've narrowed it down to two or three, um, you know, then decide how long it's gonna to take to finalize the deal with the one we picked, but I think I'd hope that we could narrow it down to two that they can make presentations to the board and the executive team, and we could jointly make a decision soon thereafter 
as a board of what we're going to do. It might take some more work, but I think it's worth the time and effort to do that. So I hand it back to you, Joe. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and I should have clarified, right? So if it, if it is feasible to identify those top two by the 26th of April, end of April, and then go into the uh, uh, having the uh, board and everybody uh, interview those two finalists. And then as Ted, as you said, I got it. Once that's selected, it's still some post selection administrative stuff that has to happen. It'll take roughly two weeks or so. Um, but no, understand that. So if, um, if, and I guess Jay and Ted and the executive team, if, if it's feasible, to, to go ahead and, and look at doing those, uh, the, the board to be able to see the final two candidate consultants at the end of April, that's great. I think we can go with that. I just don't want to rush the process. So do you all feel comfortable? Is that feasible or a little bit too ambitious? I think, I think we, we need to work out a couple more of the details on how it would work and who is going to narrow down to the two or three. Um, and, so, that, but, and Regina's got something to add. General DeSalvo, um, if you're going to do a, a two evaluation process, my first question is, is it the awards committee that you'd like to utilize to take in the initial responses, evaluate and rank? And you've mentioned two or three uh, candidates. If your evaluation, your initial evaluation is to narrow down to first identify whether it's not going to be two or three, and if you want that committee to take care of that to be your awards committee, your current awards committee, or is there another body that you're suggesting do the initial evaluation and present those top candidates to the full board for final selection? Okay, thanks, Regina. I'm not sure who the current awards committee is. Do you know who that is? I'll admit my anger. The current awards committee is Laura Sheppis, Ted Phillips, and David Emanuel, that's your current awards committee. Can can we add the consultant that we hired to be on that committee or do you, is there a process, Regina? So you can name the, uh, if, if you don't want it to be your awards committee, you can identify a different body. So it could be your awards committee plus a consultant. You can select that as your evaluation committee and give them the rules for evaluation. They'll, you'll have the criteria established in your solicitation. They'll follow those and they'll be your evaluation committee with the instructions to narrow down to the top two or three candidates and you specify who they are um, for you to accept presentations or have presentations, ask questions, and you do the final award. So, so I'm, uh, Regina, I just want to make, if, if, if we want to add one person to the existing committee, we can do that. You can do that. And then once we get down to the final two, they will present to the board and the board makes the final decision. You can do that as well. Yes. Okay. I, Joe, that would be my suggestion. Kwanzaa and Dr. Faison, I don't know what you think. Yeah, Bobby, I'm that, that's what that goes along with what I was thinking. Um, uh, Kwanzaa and, and uh, Dr. Faison, any ideas or thoughts? I'll just say again that the, the timeline sounds aggressive to me. If we need to identify someone to be a part of the awards process and um, put the RFP out as, as well, um, it's, Seems like we just need a, a little more bones uh, around around this, around this process. If we go into May, does that make everybody comfortable? Joe Kwanzaa. Um, my thoughts, Bobby, is. Um, we, we can go into May, but by May, I'm thinking mid-May and, and not too much past that. Just to, hey, we need to get this thing moving without rushing to failure. I understand, but mid-May, mid -May, I'm, I'm good with no later than mid-May. I'll just put it that way. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah. Please. Uh, uh, so, so if we have a few questions that we, we needed some guidance on, but uh, we, we can, I mean, and Unless there's some big changes that you want to make to the kind of draft scope of work, uh, I think the the team's been pretty preparing for this. So, so we we can get uh, the ITN out on the street uh, in less than a week um, if 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 we kind of get a little bit more guidance on a few things that I was hoping we could cover before the meeting w w was over. Uh, so. You, you know, um, and then if if you're wanting to use the staff and the the uh, other party, uh, um, you know, I think we can um, rank those uh, fair, fairly uh, quickly and and get you down to a list of two or three uh, candidates to consider uh, for the uh, committee or the board uh, to to review. Um, my we need to add some my, time onto that uh, uh, to, to make sure everyone feels comfortable with the information they get uh, from the presentations and, and, and all of that. But uh, I, I, I think we could, we could make that deadline uh, by the end of April, uh, 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 you know, having those, the consultants picked in and ready to come and do the presentations. Well, let, let me make a suggestion to take Kawanza's thought process is, let's use an outside date of May 15th. And if, if you know, we'll move as smartly as possible, but not in a hurry, as Kawanza says, just make sure we're methodical. Um, this is gonna be somebody we're gonna be dealing with for a long time. Um, so my suggestion is let's use an outside date of May 15th that works for Joe, gives, you know, Galanza some more comfort, but let's move as fast as we can, as smart as we can. But Ted, you had questions. What, can you walk through what those questions are? Sure, sure. So, so, uh, so some of the questions revolve around the minimal uh, qualifications that, that, that you, you would like to see. So uh, currently um, in our draft document, we have um, respondent must demonstrate experience with two comparable business excellence consulting services within the last five years ending March 31st, 2024. Uh, one of the two references must be for an electric and or water utility within the United States. So I, I was looking for a bit of guidance is is two enough, is two too many as far as uh, uh, having done a business excellence consulting service. And then on the uh, part about water, do you want, is one enough uh, uh, for um, having a reference that's an electric uh, and or water utility. So, so just wanted uh, some guidance around if you were looking for more references, if you were comfortable with that or even less references, just so uh, uh, we get that right. What are your thoughts, Ted? So, so I, I think what we've come up with the, the two uh, uh, in the last five years, and at least one of those being a utility, uh, um, gives us uh, enough space where we can get a, a good pool of candidates, uh, uh, but also uh, narrows it down enough that you know we're not. Uh, uh, Anybody that ha, you know has consultant in their last name can can be applying for for this and have to for us to review it. Um. Yeah, I'm um, Ted. The um, so two two references within the last five years, correct? Yeah, two. Have done two of these studies in the last five years. Yes, sir. That's what we have. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm comfortable with that. Comfortable. I as well. 
Okay, so, so an, an, another one of uh, the questions kind of related in this area it is based upon the uh, evaluation criteria that we will uh, use to bring those two or three candidates to you. So, so um, we, 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 right now we have uh, four uh, areas that, that we look at. If there are more areas that you would like to add, please let us know, and then what percentage. So, so one is, is basically uh, uh, estimated cost. Uh, um, one is their, uh, basically their qualifications. Uh, one is past experience. And, and then uh, the last one is their design approach. So currently we kind of have those all broken out at 25% each, but if there were one area that you wanted us to focus more on than another, we, we, could, we could easily change those numbers. And if there were areas that you felt like we needed to add, we would be happy to do that. But just putting something out there. Um, Ted, how does the, the team um, handle uh, status for the um, organization pitching? So NWBE, veteran owned, is that given waiting or just uh, consideration? No, ma'am, it's not. And Ted, what um, I'm try I got the three the design approach. If you can explain that to me a little bit, I'm I'm, I'm not sh exactly sure what all that means. So 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 that that would be the the consultant explaining to us how they would go about doing this work and and the type of information that uh, they feel like they would need to have. Uh, to successfully complete this project. So each consultant's gonna approach this uh, uh, probably a little bit differently, right? Uh, so um, we, we would like for them to share with us, you know, what, what their approach would be, and then, you know, we could glean from that, you know, uh, uh, oh, that sounds very interesting. We would be very interested in that get a higher rating, then I don't see how that would work, a lower rating on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then with that, um, the other thing I just thought of is their ability to complete this this work within a, a time frame. So, and again, I hate harping on a time frame, but I guess we need to think about one, how much time do we give them to do this? Because, uh, you know, just for Bobby Kwanzaa and, and Dr. Faison, I'm sort of thinking, We'd want to have this completed, and again, maybe I'm being too ambitious, but around September, October time frame, or I'm just trying to frame it so then we can articulate to the prospective pool here what the expectation is for their deliverable. Yeah, that, I think, that, that I think Joe, you're my gonna questions. Have to, I think, I'm sorry, Bobby. I think you're gonna have to do it in phases. I think, you know, this is a, I, I think to do it and do it right, we're going to have to do this in phases. And I think it would be important to, th you know, get their thoughts. And I think when, you know, the team that's working on this, you know, Ted and David, um, and who else is on the team? Laura Shepherds. Laura Sheppes and the consultant um, that we bring in, I think what I like to do is after, you know, that that team has had time to digest this, to come back to us and say, you know, phase one might take this amount of time, phase two might take this amount of time, but I think some of it's going to take a quite a bit of time and I don't, I want to do it right. So I, I like to hear comments after, um, you know, I, I think it'd be worth getting this group back together, whoever wants to join, once they start hearing what these proposals look like and just get a sense of, you know, what is in, in this 
this group that's going to be tasked, what are their thoughts after they start seeing proposals of what it's really going to take to do this and do it right? And to me, we could probably do phase one by the end of the year, but I think it'll be a multi-phase deal if we're going to really do this and do it right. I mean, we're asking, this is a list that we're asking to do a lot of stuff. So, Joe, that's just my suggestion. Okay. Uh, Quan, any thoughts? I may be the conservative one on the on the call today. If this looking at all of the area, um, it, it this feels like it could be closer to a, a, a nine to twelve month journey for us. So, um, I'll 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 leave it at um, getting feedback from uh, the consultants during the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, that's a great point, Bobby and Kwanzaa. Um, and, yeah, and had any thoughts? Uh, well, th that that is part of uh, the the beauty of doing an ITN is that we have the uh, um, ability to to do those further negotiations. Uh, uh, um, between the time that we get the proposal and, and we make that final award. So I think Regina had something to. So if I can just clarify your process, your, your criteria will be laid out um, in your solicitation. Your first evaluation group, which will be your awards panel, plus the consultant will evaluate based on the criteria and rank um, whether you want two or three respondents. Um, the, the board will make that direction or you can uh, give that guidance now they'll narrow those candidates down and then in your second evaluation which will be by the board uh you will make your rankings based on that criteria plus the rankings after the presentations are made um, the board will make the final award and you will authorize staff to go ahead and execute or negotiate the contract with them and finalize the terms of the contract. And again, it will, the, the scope of services you're laid out here, most of the information that will be in your contract, as far as the scope of work, the services that are required, um, any deliverables, all of that will be specifically laid out in the contract and the board will give authorization once the negotiations are um, successful, uh, you would give, staff the authorization to enter into the contract and begin services. So I want to be sure that that was clear, Regina. You, the, the committee that, uh, I don't know if that's the right term for it, but it's, the, it, the, the, in, the, the staff team that, that looks at this will use the four criteria that we just described weighted at 25%. The two highest would come to the board. The board would use the same criteria, Plus, and then the combination of the criteria that the staff came up with and the numbers that the board came up with would then determine who the top candidate, the top consultant would be. Correct. It's very. It's a very. It's a rigid process based on the, the number. It won't. It is not something where we just ask for a vote of the board. Which one do you want? No. You'll have to score it according sure. to the rate. Correct. So, You'll keep a score card as well. Correct. Right. Just So I think I'm saying the same thing Jay just said. What I envision is once, it, once it's time for the board, for those two consultants, again, we go through the, uh, through the criteria, score the, as a board, score them, and then the, the votes are tallied up, and then the selection is made best based on that. Correct? Correct. The combination of both the staff numbers and the presentation numbers. numbers, yes. Gina, in that process, at any time, is the board um, updated, made aware of the number of consultants that that have applied, and perhaps a maybe even if it's just a list of names. So. Mm -hmm. And what I want to make clear for both evaluation panels, the initial evaluation panel and the board as an evaluation panel, you're both under the sunshine. So any discussions, 
any information has to take place in the sunshine. Initially, uh, the board, uh, the, your first evaluation panel, which they are accustomed because it's your awards committee, they are accustomed to working this way. They are not allowed to discuss or share information. Uh, the award itself and evaluation itself takes place or their ranking takes place in a public meeting. So they'll take in the information. Um, you'll see, they'll see all of the responses. They'll evaluate. So that information is subject to public record as well as Sunshine Law. And once they come to you, again, you're under the sunshine um, in the respect of you'll see the information come in. If you want to see all of the evaluators, there's nothing that precludes you from seeing all of the submissions that come in. But again, you're under the sunshine, so you won't be able to have any conversations and discuss that information. Kim, we, we can discuss with that committee, not with the board, right? You can discuss the you, one evaluation. I would avoid having com communications among evaluation panels um, because you're both still working on the same project. You're still working on the same final action, and they are your decision makers. So I would avoid having conversations among evaluation panels and you also want to avoid having any con communications with any of the respondents because those are considered ex parte so you can't communicate with the respondents to the solicitation outside of the sunshine and i would advise against the two evaluation companion panels communicating as well okay so, Regina, what about i'm sorry go ahead bobby finish but we can talk to people on the panels what the schedule is, but not talk about any in depth about any. So what I'll advise for staff, we can make sure that you're aware of timelines and that information will be shared among all members. Okay, um, Regina, what about if, um, so we're, we're, the process has started, and I've got a question uh, for the, um, that external consultant who's going to be our interlocutor uh, about something. Am I allowed to talk to her and say, hey, I don't, you know, I got a question on something. Can I go one-on-one -on -one with, with that person? I would advise because that member is now a member of your evaluation panel. So it's not the awards committee plus that one person. That person is now, for all intents and purposes, a part of that committee. So you have your three awards committee members plus the consultant. That consultant is also under the sunshine. I would suggest we can as assign a staff member um, who's not part of the evaluation panel. That's typically somebody who's in our procurement group. When there are questions, you submit your questions to the uh, procurement um, professional who's a, who assigned to this award. You can submit your questions to that person. That person typically broadcasts your question to all members along with the answers. So, okay, and not to overcomplicate things, if we had the um, interlocutor not part of the awards committee, would that change it where then I could call him or her with a question and they're not part of the awards committee or is it still a sunshine issue? You could talk to that person as your consultant if they're not a part of the awards committee. But typically, and, and it's not uncommon for evaluators to have questions or for uh, respondents to have questions. Typically, there's a process in place for that where those people reach out to the procurement team and the procurement team fills those questions. My suggestion, if we hire this consultant, that person should be on the panel um, and we should have somebody, Regina, Jay, um, that we can talk to to answer questions as this process goes forward. That's just my suggestion. And again, I don't think that's different from any other procurement where you have a member of staff on the procurement team who's available to clarify information. Um, related to the solicitation, as well as clarify questions for respondents. Regina, we also can identify subject matter expert that can hear things that are going on and help uh, have not input on the scheduling, and but can answer questions. And I think that's a role that uh, 
the rest of the leadership team really can can fill. So if you're not talking to Ted or Laura or David, then Sheila, Ray, and I are still available to be subject matter experts. We can know about the um, the the product. We can know about the information. Yeah. Um, so we that, that I think we can make that work. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's just the the evaluation panels that you're not allowed to communicate with. Okay. Okay, that clarifies it. My question to Regina and Joe, you know, do we need to have a special board meeting to approve to move forward or can this group have the ability to move this thing forward? You don't need a special meeting uh, to move it forward. You have the ability to call a special meeting, but I don't believe you'll need a special meeting based on your timeline. It looks like it's going to line up with your regular board meetings. Your question is, do we need a special meeting to kick this off? And I don't think we do. We can start the process without we're, we're fine to start the process, depending on the timing. When we get down to 2, um, if it's close to the May. Board meeting, we could put it on the May board meeting. This also is pretty important and it may take a little bit more time and we may want to call a special meeting to do the evaluation. So, but to kick this off, we're, we're ready to kick it off in the next few days. We've got everything unless there's, Ted may have a couple more questions, but, um, no, but I think but, we're, but, but Jay and Joe, my suggestion is we have a special meeting once we lined up, um, the two finalists. Um, if there's a yeah. thought that there needs to be a third finalist that we could hear full presentations. Um, and again, following Kwanzaa is let's be move it as, as expediently as possible, but be smart about timing. Don't don't push this to where we're making bad decisions. Yeah, I think that's the same. Very, I, I agree with you. We we can we can hold a special when we get to the place where we know what the final yeah. two are, we can hold a special meeting. Ted, you got other. Well, well, well just a little bit of cl clarification. So, so uh, um, I, I think you, you were fine with the minimum qualifications that I suggested. Uh, I wasn't sure that um, what were, were you comfortable with the weights on the evaluation criteria? I am. I'm, yeah, I'm good with them. Okay. Okay. Just, Andre? just. Yes, I am as well. Th th thank you very much. I just want to uh, 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 be a little bit captain obvious here. So uh, also. Um, hold hold on one, one second. Can can you walk through? Can someone walk through what it means if we put uh, cost? Like so, the three of those are. Um, things that you, you, you may have opinions about the cost is going to be a number. Um, and so I think the board needs to understand if the cost is 25%, then whoever the lowest cost is, is going to get all the points for that version. I, I was going to say something about that. Jay, I'm concerned about that. Because yeah, I thought you would be. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I was going to say something and I just held back, but I, I, I'm, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Jay, cause I, I don't want to be picking the low cost person in something that's this this important. So I don't know how you reevaluate that, Ted and Joe and Kwanzaa. I don't know if y'all feel the same way I do, but I I think this is oh, yeah. this is gonna be from a fiduciary standpoint, this is gonna be very, very important. We we should just weight the cost less. It's still it's still part of the package, but uh, we can drop that weighting, um, and then it, then the maybe the, the the scope takes up the difference. I mean the um, well, we, we 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 could drop the the I mean the um, the rate to say ten percent is is fine. that a comfortable number? I'm fine with that. And and then that that remaining so take it from twenty five to ten and then that remaining fifteen percent we could add five percent to each of the other three categories where they would be at thirty percent each. I'm fine with that. Joe, okay. y'all feel 
Yeah, I'm good with that. I was just going to, I'm good with that. I was thinking for the cost, my interpretation of that metric was um, um, getting the most out of that um, from a cost efficiency and, um, and and like proficiency. So, you know, you could have somebody coming in lowballing the heck out of it to take advantage of the scenario like Jay said, or, but my thing was, okay, they, they're a little bit more, but they can deliver a, what appears to be a better product based on their experience and what they're saying they can produce. So I think we just need to, you know, uh, low is good, but also you gotta take into account how, what their capabilities are. And, you know, the, the more quality you want, you're gonna have to be willing to pay for that too. But, uh, yeah. I think there was some subjectivity connected to cost with going with the old adage of you get what you pay for if if there's greater value that we can assign to it then the waiting on cost would 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 follow that i think that what we just did by lowering the weighting of cost allows you the flexibility to do what you just described um <laughs> if it's because it is not if somebody comes in and they are the lowest cost, they will get the biggest, they'll get a hundred, whatever the sure. full points for that, regardless of whether they're effective in the other areas or not. And so that that's, um, I think this, that's why I wanted to bring it up. I think we've solved yeah. that issue by changing it this way. And Ted, for clarity's sake, can you ascribe the, the weight that's given to each criteria? Do you have that available? Yeah, so, so, so we, Based upon this discussion, we, we were talking about uh, uh, the um, price be 10%, which, it, like Jay said, is a quantitative uh, uh, approach. Not There's no subjectivity to that. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, and then the other three areas, uh, uh, the uh, qualifications would, would be 30%, the past experience would be 30%, and then their design approach would be 30%. Now that would be uh, every, so there's some subjectivity there. Uh, uh, and, and so all four of us uh, uh, would assign those a number and then we would average those numbers and, and give you uh, what would come out. And then my re recommendation would be that we, we shoot for two but if we have a third one that is very close to the second one, uh, uh, in, in you know, it's only off a, a number or two, just, you know, the ranking's very close, then we go ahead and recommend three to you uh, to uh, do interviews with and go to the next step, if that's okay. I'm fine with three. If, yeah. which, if you guys believe that, I don't know what Kwanzaa and Joe feel, but I feel totally comfortable with that. Yeah. I'm good with that. Three actually feels better to me. Well, we, we, I mean, we could go ahead and just plan to do three. That that there's there's nothing magic about two and two versus. I think three. the flexibility of two or three is probably good. Okay. Um, I'm 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 fine. I have, yeah, confidence in the committee to come up with. You know, if Kwanzaa thinks three is makes her more comfortable, I'm I'm up for that too. I just want to make sure we're doing the right, making the right decisions, and I, you know, this is going to probably take you know quite a bit of time. So I do think it should be a special meeting to do it and do it right and bring these, you know, two or three in so we can fully understand. Um, and I also wanted to to just uh, give your attention. So, so um, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what uh, uh, these proposals will be, but um, if there's any information that's uh, uh, secure data. So any information about how our plants run or, or other things of that nature, uh, we will required the consultant to complete a very detailed uh, questionnaire, uh, which usually adds some time to the process, right? It's, it's not just a, uh, a five 
uh, little things that they have to check off. It's 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 pretty extensive, and that that is based upon uh, our regulatory uh, requirements. So uh, wanted to make sure that you have that, but I think you, you've given us some flexibility on the time. So I, I think that we can uh, uh, make that work uh, within that May uh, line that you've you've given us. So I appreciate that. Um, uh, there, there was some talk about uh, uh, phasing uh, uh, um, uh, of the project. Uh, what what we were envisioning would be that hey, come come in and do uh, a uh, evaluation, and then based upon that evaluation, there might be a ladder uh, implementation plans that would follow that. Uh, um, and that would be how we would uh, structure the proposal. Um, am, am I getting at what you were requesting with that, uh, Bobby? Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing is, all I want is, I think Joe makes a good point that we want to move as fast as possible, but if we decide to go ahead with X, Y, Z, I want to make sure that you know we're producing good information in a timely effort, but also making sure that some of this stuff might take more time than you know what we propose. So I think part of the negotiation once we pick somebody is going to be, you know, what does first phase look like and what or what success looked like in first phase? What if is there a need for a second or third phase? But I, I want to make sure that is part of the process. Right. Okay, thank you. I mean, Regina, if we decide to hire XYZ and, and then we decide to go to another phase that's not comp contemplated, can the board decide that or not? Could, could you clarify your question, Bobby? When you when you say go to another phase, do you mean another phase of evaluation or another phase no, no, of? No, 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 what I'm saying is if we pick somebody and we ask them to do, you know, X, and once they're in the process, we decide that we want to do Y, what would it take to move forward with Y? Is that a board decision or... Is that, do you have to go through the process again? No, you don't have to go through the process again. We can contemplate that in your contract. You can give them the uh, scope of duties, the list of deliverables, and also as in other assignments as uh, directed by the board. So no, you won't have to go through the process again. We'll give you that flexibility in your contract. Okay, thank you. So, so just one one other thing, and and I hope I don't offend anybody by this, but uh, uh, Florida's uh, sunshine laws and procurement laws are are, are pretty tricky, uh, uh, and we we don't want to uh, trip up on anything. So I I, I was going to request that. Uh, Possibly Regina uh, put together a document or even a training session uh, for uh, the board to to be able to review so that uh, they would know all the rules going in uh, um, and we, we don't get messed up. Is that okay? That's an ex excellent idea. I think it's, yeah. I think whether for Regina's purposes, if we can, um, you know, put that and everybody can join. I just think for her to do it one-on-one -on -one is gonna to be tough. So if we could kind of work through this process um, and as once we send this out in the next two or three weeks, try to get a date that works for everybody and let her do a training session is my suggestion. And then whoever can't make it do one-on-one, -on -one. but for her benefit, it'd be easier if we can do as many at the same time, which would be would include the panel plus the board yeah we can definitely get that together for you right 
Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this one other question from my end, um, would, would you like for us to send the proposal to the board before we send it out for one last review and comments, or do you want us just to move forward? I feel comfortable moving forward. I don't know what Joe and Kwanzaa thinks. I'd, I'd recommend this. If you can, um, so like the evaluation criteria, now that we know what it is, just make sure that's incorporated. And then the only other question I have though is I'm looking, unless we, we revise it on the schedule where it says consulting firm shall develop a proposed blah, 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 and be completed within, it still seems like we're, we're, we're giving them some type of projected suspense when we're not sure it is. So I'm and again, a little bit hang up on my end. I'm still not sure how do we address that portion or do we just take that out? I, I think based on what I heard today, we could just take that out and figure that out when we get to the negotiation stage. Okay. I agree. Yep. Okay, so I think, um, and uh, again, let me just make sure with Bobby and, and Kwanzaa. So we just, uh, um, articulate the, the evaluation criteria in the ITN that we just went over and then just take out that schedule suspense thing and I think we're good to launch. I don't, I'm comfortable, Bobby, you comfortable in Kwanzaa? I'm comfortable. Yes, I'm comfortable. Okay, great. General, I have, yeah, one, I I have one last, one, I have one more question. I don't know if it's the last one or not. Um, I think that there was, um, I think I understood Kwanzaa might have said this, that it might be helpful to find consultants that have not worked with us in the recent past. Um, and I just want to get the feel is, is that something that is generally we, we find people that have worked with us in the recent past because they know us a little bit better is the to, general to, to, me, call, to, to, to not to use people that have not worked with us. I, the way I feel just hearing you guys talk is we have a grading, you know, and I think once we interview these last two or three people, and I, I don't, I mean, I want to do what Kwanzaa feels comfortable with, but where I'm coming from with the way we're ranking, and I got three minutes, but the way we're ranking it, I feel very comfortable that we look at the best, we find the best whether they've worked with us in the past or not. But I don't want okay, to get, great. I mean, Kwanzaa, you speak. I, I want to make sure Kwanzaa is comfortable too. I certainly don't don't want it to limit the process at the end of the day. I would want the best of the best to come in and, and perform this work. I just great. think Thank you. To, take into consider, to take into consideration again, as I was saying is, you know, just fresh perspective, but I don't think it needs to be added to evaluation criteria given any weight um but perhaps uh, just a call out let us know Wait. thank you that makes sense thank you i mean the we've had an engineering firm that's you know worked with us in the black and beach i don't think they should be part of the process i mean they've been in the middle of working with us i want fresh eyes that's different than so I don't think they should be part of our group. Not, I have nothing against Black and Beach, but I think they've been integrally evolved. And I, I don't think they should be part of this process. I think what, from a fiduciary standpoint, from where I'm looking, yeah. is we're looking for fresh eyes. And, and just one follow up on that. So, so uh, um, as we spoke earlier uh, this week, uh, we, we, we can take them off the list, but we will be advertising this uh, as per required by Florida state statutes. And if they were to uh, submit a proposal, we, we would have to accept it uh, just, I, just to I, make sure we un understand the technicalities of the law there. I, I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm saying I understand. people involved, I mean, you know, from a a lot of reasons i think what the board from a fiduciary standpoint we want somebody that can help you and i got to run in a second but somebody that can help you guys 
help the community and help the board make sure we're making the best decisions. And I think what we're looking for is new eyes. You know, if somebody's been in the um, in JA for a long time, I think that's not what we're looking for. That's just me personally. I've got to run, guys. Joe, thank you for setting this up. And Jay and the team, I appreciate everything y'all are doing to help us get this moving forward. Okay, see you later, Bobby. General DeSalva, I just wanted to clarify Ted's point. We don't want to, the appearance that we're pre-disqualifying uh, candidates. So in compliance with procurement rules, statutes, um, it's a public solicitation. You take in respondents. Yeah, no, I understand. And I think um, uh, Bobby's concern, or Bobby's, that last statement, that can be incorporated once we look at the qualifications and the evaluation and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense, Regina? It does. Okay. I'm looking at the list. I think it's 20. So, um, I mean, that's a good large swath. Um, but anyway, I'm comfortable with the the uh, the outreach uh, on it and understand the sunshine implications. But I, we can stay within compliance and, and still select the best candidate. I'm sure of that. Well, sir, I, I would like to thank you for me and my staff for the uh, clarification on these issues. This is going to make the process go uh, uh, smooth, um, you know, get, get it right to start with, and, and then you don't have to fix things during the process. So, so I appreciate yeah. uh, uh, the time this uh, morning to make sure that we were in alignment. So thank you very much. No, thank you. And again, if um, and, and for Jay and the whole staff there, Again, if you see anything that's getting out of kilter, obviously let us know. Um, we sort of think we'll know what we're doing, but I'll admit I, I'm not the smartest one either. So, yeah, we want to make sure we do the process right, not have any missteps, which is absolutely key. And Regina, I know you'll keep us um, square on that. Um, any other questions or issues on Jay or the staff or anybody then? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay, great. I, I think we're good. So again, we're good to launch on the uh, the ITN. Just give us a, a, a courtesy copy of what's being launched there, so we can uh, stay abreast and and we'll take it from there. Yes, sir. Great. Okay, barring any other questions or whatever, I think we're we can adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.